Stop by to interact with the community and I every Friday night at 8 o'clock for live stream Fridays. Welcome trolls. <laughs>afternoon good morning or good evening depending on where you are thanks everyone for the support stopping by the comments are amazing more flashing lights and the characteristics of each flash is really awesome because at one point it's going to give us give us a lot of details on exactly what we are seeing out there and what types of explosions do you see how um, the stars are moving over fast and now they stopped every time you'll see that happen it's a time lapse so we passed a couple of minutes here and this happened so maybe five six minutes went by and look again two different um whatever meteors asteroids and now we're going to talk about satellites just for the fun of it you know i know it's mostly trolls but we're seeing things from north to south so this object would never be um anything that has to do with a satellite especially not the size of what we're seeing. So when some of you tell me that it's near Earth that we're seeing the asteroids and not um, in space, well, I'm going to prove you wrong, and I'm going to prove to you how exactly we can see that, even though it's just the trolls that are wondering about that because it's, it's such a waste of time. We know exactly that this is not a satellite for Pete's sakes. You see it spiraling. It's an asteroid. If you want to know if it's in uh, Earth's atmosphere, well, we're going to see it remain the same size. When we see objects go from big to small or from small to big, they're either coming in or leaving Earth's atmosphere or flying by them. Here we can see very close-up detail of these objects spiraling. So, you know, a satellite, guys, often, yeah, we can see them with the naked eye, but we can't see the object. We're seeing the light it's emitting. And it's not a light that's on it, it's flashing, whether it be because of the sun, reflectivity, whatever. But they're so small. We're talking about something maybe 300 feet wide. So something that's 300 feet wide is not gonna be this big. In my infrared camera, especially out at the reach I am now, it's going to be a pinpoint. Now watch this object here, which of course some of these could be also UFOs, you know, uh, unidentified flying objects. They all are, because <laughs> we don't know what is what. But that object on the top coming down there is not a satellite either, because we're going north to south, uh, from in the sky, the top of the globe to the bottom of the globe. Satellites go from left to right. So, uh, you know, we know right away if it's a satellite or not. Satellites very small on a straight path and trajectory. This summer, I'm going to get a better chance of getting a lot of them because when I actually see them myself with the naked eye, I'll be able to point up with the infrared uh, quite easily to be able to show you guys exactly what it does look like. They're not big. Satellites are very, very small. Take this, for example. Yes, you could think that it's a satellite. Well, it, it, that's not on the right path. <laughs> We're looking from the top to the bottom of the globe. Satellites don't go from top to the bottom. They go from left to right around the globe. That's what they're doing. And it's so easy to rule out. Okay, this is cool, guys. You see how I'm moving over here? So we're talking four, five, six, seven, eight, about nine, about 10 minutes. That's a time lapse. So you're actually seeing, I didn't cut out any footage, and this appeared after that amount of time. So the amount of time that the stars moved over that you guys just saw on the screen, that's the amount of time it takes me to see an event. So anywhere from five to 10 minutes, there's always something going by in the sky that you can capture. And I've seen nights, like the first time I tried this, it was incredible. I saw something like 15 to 30 um, objects. So that it's going to be crazy this summer to see all the different events. And uh, don't forget, we're going to be able to track asteroids, meteors, and comets. But the fun part is that here, again, when you see me moving over like this, I'm not moving over. It's a time lapse. So right now, there's six minutes going by, eight minutes, 10 minutes going by, 12 minutes going by, here about 14. And then we stopped here because look what's going to come into view. Um, so do you understand? We're seeing a time lapse. So that's the amount of time it's taking me to find the objects. And here is a flash. 
and the flash. And you have to find these because they're bright flashes that they're easy to see, yes, but it's it lasts the time for you to blink. So if you blink, you're not going to see them. I bet you some of you could even see some that I haven't even seen. to just so many different flashes out there. But I find it really interesting that each flash really has its own characteristic. I'm trying to group them together, trying to look at the different colors, different sizes of flashes, uh, the occurrence. And uh, not so long ago, we saw those blue flashes, which are very interesting. And I haven't seen since last year. Another time lapse here, about seven minutes went by. We stop and this comes into view. So now we'll go see it in uh, different ways and close up and slow down. Having the infrared camera in the sky, guys, here in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, I'll be able to find a lot of things. And if anything big or massive does go by, I will see it. I'll never see it as close as Hubble Telescope or as close as any big space uh, association. That doesn't really matter. You know, some of you, even from the Nibiru community, and we're all in this together, and some of us are looking for large celestial objects out there. And with the infrared, we're going to be able to do it. Even NASA themselves and all scientists and space agencies doing infrared work mention that that is how dark objects can be seen. Even Oumuamua, uh, when it went into Lyra, before going into Lyra, this supposed alien object that was tumbling front to back, they say that you know, it's a dark object. These objects can't be seen just with regular cameras. They can, but it's better with the infrared because the infrared is going to give us also a sense of uh, size and scale because of the light intensities that we can see and view here. So again, um, if this was a satellite, it would be off course. So I'm telling you, when I see something straight, I'll be honest with you and I'll tell you guys, it's on a satellite path, but it still could be an asteroid. And that way, we can rule out a lot of junk, uh, you know, for, for whoever is worried about this, because I'm not even worried about this myself. I love the findings. Um, are they coming to Earth? Well, you can see it. No, this is not coming to Earth. It's probably going by between Earth and the moon. Um, don't forget, on the elliptical, that's where everything is, where the sun rises and, and uh, goes down, where the moon rises and goes down. And it's also... Um, what is attracting, obviously, the asteroids, because asteroids, before coming to Earth, you know that they go around the sun. And that's how scientists are able to detect them, and especially with infrared, because then they're seeing a whole bunch of stuff. So yeah, they're able to predict so much ahead of time before anything hits the Earth that's actually pretty big. But, you know, like Oumuamua and other objects, some objects are just they're not detectable for whatever the reason because we're not knowing where they're coming from. They're only now studying um, how asteroids, um, where, they're, where they're from. Okay, we all say they're from the Kuiper belt or they come down from the asteroid belt. Listen, they're, they're tails of comets and uh, bigger asteroids and slivers and then, you know, they, they come off and then they get sucked down um, by, uh, beside the first large celestial object that they encounter, they are pulled down into that atmosphere of that planet or or star. So it's pretty incredible. Some of these at one point are going to hit each other. We are going to see some really cool things with the infrared. And it, guys, it's not taking away any time from my moon research. Uh, fear not, nine days, maybe 10 days, the moon is actually coming back. If I'm not mistaken, it's on the 20th. Um, that the full moon should be around. So I like getting it leading up to the full moon and leaving the full moon. So here inversion, x-ray filtering, um, I'm gonna take a picture of the button because people get mad when I say x-ray filtering. We're inverting these things. There you just saw at the back a sliver um, that appeared. And how do I know it? Because the exposure, the exposure is adjusted. We could only see uh, things coming from this object. I just want to thank all of you for following the research and for taking the time to subscribe to this channel.